Okay. So the last thing that we did, sorry, I had to erase it from my PowerPoint because, yeah. Um, last thing we did, we, we were looking at synaptic transmission and how synaptic transmission is going to cause the inside of our muscle to become more positive, right? So we're going to go up to like plus 30 millivolts because sodium rushed in. Sodium is going to come. Um, let me just redraw that. We're going to have our T-tubule right like this the positive charge is going to come down the t-tubule and when it does that positive charge is going to cause the calcium inside of the sarcoplasmic reticulum to be released so we're going to see that calcium starts to come out of our sarcoplasmic reticulum and goes into the cytoplasm which is called the sarcoplasm or the cell so we want to recall, we have our sarcomere here, right? And our sarcomere is our contractile unit. So don't forget, on the sarcomere, we have our thick filament, we have our thin filament. Our thick filament is myosin, and we have our myosin heads. And then our thin filament is going to be actin, and actin is going to be these individual purple units. And then underneath the actin, it's gonna have the myosin binding site. So our actin is gonna be kind of like this. And then underneath is gonna be our myosin binding site. Okay. Just recall that the thin filament is also gonna have two other proteins. So here is my tropomycin. And then this is troponin. Okay. So I only drew one up here because I am not gonna, I'm not gonna try to draw this out for everything. It's already a little bit small, so I might have to draw this one more time, a little bit bigger for you. But this is very hard process for me to draw. It has to do with the fact that you have multiple things moving. So it's not like I just bring sodium and potassium in different directions. I have to move the head of the myosin and then I have to move actin. So it's something you have to kind of think about in terms of using your imagination. I know, crazy thought. And how it works. But I promise I'll show, I'll post another like publisher video that I have that actually shows the actual like animation of how this works. Okay. So here's how the process is going to work. Calcium gets released. And when calcium gets released, it binds to troponin here. Okay, Eesh, go away. It's going to bind to troponin. I don't know why it's doing that. It's driving me nuts. It's going to bind to troponin. When it binds to troponin, what this is going to cause is it's going to cause the tropomyosin to move. And when that tropomyosin moves, it twists. It's going to twist around and it's going to open the myosin binding sites, which I can't do because my picture is secure in here. So I'm just going to take my white pen and I'm going to erase this away. This is why I'm only gonna do it to one side because like two sides is gonna be much more difficult, okay? Just like that. So our tropomyosin doesn't go away. It just moves out of the way. So it'll move out of the way like that. Our troponin will also move out of the way because it un unhinges, basically it unhinges this whole thing. And then that's because of calcium. So the other side's going to do that. All, the, all of these are going to do that, okay? We're going to have to set up a couple of uh, additional things before we're ready to get started with the next thing. One of the things you have to understand is that on every single myosin head, we're storing a little bit of energy. So energy is gonna be in the form of ATP. And I'm gonna make my ATP, what extra color do I have? I already used pretty much all of them. Uh, I guess I can make it yellow, but yellow is such a harsh, ugh, so harsh. 
on here. I'll just make it black. I'll just make it black. Okay. So you're going to store a little bit of ATP on each of your myosin heads. All right. ATP is energy. So if you don't know, ATP is adenosine triphosphate, and it's basically got these three phosphates on top of a nucleotide. So you have your like little nucleotide with your like side chain over here, and then you'll have a P, a P, and a P like that. Okay. This is the energy of the cell because essentially when you break this down, you can break off one of these phosphate bonds. And when you do, you get your adenosine like this, and you have a diphosphate, which is basically two Ps plus you have your phosphate. So this part is called a DP plus P. And this part is called a T P because there's three phosphates, that's triphosphate. This is D diphosphates, okay? That's an important thing to understand because when you get rid of a phosphate, it actually transfers energy. And that transfer of energy is what I need in order to do work. And doing work is actually causing matter to change. So I'm causing matter to change. So I need my ATP to help me. So you're gonna have a little bit of ATP bound here. And what happens is when it binds here, it actually is going to break down into ADP and P. So each one of these heads is, we're just gonna say it's gonna hold a little bit of energy. You know, it's, it's just gonna make my life easier. You just say it has ATP, like ATP, okay? So this side is a side I'm not gonna change. So we have a little bit of energy that's stored on our muscle. The amount of energy that's stored on your muscle is gonna give you about six, uh, six se seconds, excuse me, six seconds worth of sprinting. And then you're gonna have to create energy in order to contract your muscle continuously. So here's what's gonna happen. Okay, we have a little bit of ATP stored on each one of these heads. Why do these heads not already pull the muscle? Sorry, this is my M line. I forgot to draw that. Because when you have tropomyosin bound, your myosin binding sites are closed on actin. So even if these heads wanted to move up a little bit and bind here, it has nothing to bind to. So it's, just, it's moving, it's trying to cock its head, but it can't because it, it's blocked. What happens is as soon as you move tropomyosin out of the way, ATP is going to be broken down into ADP and P. So ATP is going to end up being ADP and P, like that. When you do that, what ends up happening is this causes the myosin head to spring up. So it's like nice and bulging upward, okay? It springs up and it attaches to the actin that's right above it. So each one of these is gonna spring up and attach to its nearest actin just like that. And we haven't pulled anything yet, but that just that breaking of that bond is gonna release a little bit of energy. And when it releases that energy, our myosin head is going to cock up or come up. Then the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to release ADP and P. Okay, so this is again, a harder thing for me to kind of draw out and show you, but ADP, whoa, ADP and P leave. When ADP and P leave, what this does is it causes the myosin head to pull, okay? So each one of these myosin heads pulls the actin, its actin towards the M line. So you should see that, oh, okay, the actin's going to move forward one, one uh, molecule. It's gonna move forward one molecule, it's gonna move forward one molecule. Okay, good, we contracted our muscle a little bit. It moved in just a little bit. So the Z discs move in, myosin moves in towards the M line. As long as calcium is still present and you have enough energy, you're gonna continue to contract your muscle and it's gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, essentially, okay? But now we have our 
head bound to our actin and it pulled, but it has to release in order to pull again. So in order for me to release, what I'm going to do is, okay, so ADP and P left. Okay. So ADP and P left. So that's gone. That's gone. And if you want to, what you can do is you could try to draw all this stuff, which I can't draw because it's, it's now part of my background, basically on my slide. So I can't move this, but just imagine like what we're going to do is we're going to make one more act in right there. So what I did is when I pulled this, I pushed my actin forward by one, okay? And now you're gonna think about the fact that your head is still upright. It's still bound to your actin. I wanna unbind my myosin head from actin so that I can pull again, so I can pull the next one, basically. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to have another molecule of ATP. So ATP is gonna come in here. And when that ATP binds to the myosin head, what it's gonna do is it's gonna cause the myosin head to droop. So see why it's kind of difficult to draw this. So this goes away, that goes back down again. And now my head is off of my actin, just like that. So if I need to pull again, again, I'm gonna make my ATP go into ADP and P. So as my ADP and P are bound to the head, it's going to cock back up again. Then I release ADP and P and it pulls forward, okay? So let me try to draw this out as individual steps for you guys so you understand this a little bit better. This is probably the hardest part of muscle contraction, uh, what happens to move the muscle forward. And then we're gonna see what happens to the sarcomere as a result. So I'm probably gonna draw this in a slightly or different orientation just because it's like the pattern that I'm, I'm used to drawing and I'm gonna draw it on this side so I have that side over there. So we're gonna say here, let's say our actin has a, a myosin binding site available, okay? Basically, your tropomyosin and your troponin have been moved out of the way because our calcium has bound like that. I'm just going to draw one, one head. <clears throat> so we already bound calcium to a troponin and tropomyosin moved out of the way. In this case, we're going to have the head of, ac um, the head of myosin, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me that has a little bit of ATP bound to it, okay? So the ATP bound to it means that the head of myosin is not bound to actin. So our next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to draw our actin again with our myosin binding site here. And we're gonna draw the head, whoop. We're gonna draw the head of myosin. And in this case, the head of myosin is going to come up and attach to my actin when my ATP becomes ADP and P. So I broke down ATP and ADP and P. P is phosphate, if you didn't know, okay? So ADP plus a phosphate, when that gets split, it's gonna release energy and this causes the myosin head to come up and bind to my actin and my actin at my myosin binding site. The next thing that's going to happen is I want to pull this thing forward, okay? So I'm going to have to draw two probably. Maybe I'll draw two like that. So I'm going to draw this one and then I'm going to draw that one. And essentially what's going to happen is my myosin, my myosin head is going to pull that way. See how I kind of like drew it a little bit like it pulled it forward here, okay? So we're gonna think about that. In order to do this, ADP and P have to leave. So they have to leave the myosin head. So as they leave the myosin head, you release energy, and that's what pulls 
the myosin head forward towards the M line, okay? The problem here is that the head of myosin is still attached to actin. So if I wanna pull this second one, what I'm gonna need to do is I'm going to need to remove my myosin head. So I need to remove the myosin head now. So what I'm gonna draw then is I'm gonna draw, here's my actin like that. And I wanna remove my myosin head. So to remove my myosin head and make it go back downward, which I'm gonna erase that a little bit. I'm gonna put it like, I don't know, like right here, cause that one moved forward, okay? I'm going to bind another ATP, just like that. So basically we went back up to here where we have an ATP bound, where we're not, we're not attached anymore like that. So ATP bound to the head of myosin detaches it from the myosin binding site on actin. Then if you still have your myosin binding site open, which we do now, what's going to happen is once again, we're gonna draw our actin. Whoop, maybe I'm a little bit too close to my arrow. like that, the other color. And so now the next thing is the head is going to bind again here as my ATP becomes AD, ADP, excuse me. And P, okay? So we're gonna do this one more time. I'm gonna try to come back all the way up here. It might be a little bit weird because my circle became a weird oblong, I don't know, weird oblong shape instead of a, a circular motion. So we're going to push this ATP, I'm sorry, this actin forward even more here by basically removing ADP and P. And when we do that, we're going to push our head forward even more. I mean, I hope you can kind of get that. Sorry, I'm running out of space here basically ADP, whoops, 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 whoops. I don't need that line right there. Let me see if I can draw this a little bit better. Like that, like that. Ugh, all these colors are killing me. Um, and I need maybe a third one. Let's just do that so that you understand that I'm pulling forward a little bit more. So here I've pushed that a little bit forward because I've released my ADP and phosphate. Okay, those left, they left. Then again, you're gonna go back to here when I bind another ATP molecule to my head of my myosin the head of the myosin will detach from the actin and you'll start the cycle all over again, okay? I just did this one extra cycle, but technically you could have gone right back to there and that cycle would have continued. So as long as you have calcium present and you have energy present, you'll continue to contract your muscle all the way to the middle of the M line. As soon as acetylcholine goes away, and you close the sodium channel, calcium gets reabsorbed back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And when that happens, you're going to close off the myosin binding sites. So it doesn't matter how much energy you have, your myosin binding site is closed. The head of the myosin will still continue to like bob up and down, but it can't attach and pull because the myosin binding site's not available anymore. So I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen to the sarcomere really quickly. Okay, I'm just gonna make a small sarcomere. Mostly because I can't really draw a big sarcomere very, very well. So this is gonna be our relaxed muscle, just like that. And I want you to think about what's gonna happen, like take a minute pause and think about what's gonna happen from a relaxed muscle to a contracted muscle. Maybe you do that while I draw out my sarcomere here. 
This is going to be my relaxed muscle. And I want you to think about going in here and making your A bands, your I bands. Like where are your A bands? Where are your I bands? After, hopefully you draw this out too. You make your A bands, your I bands. Those are gonna be our relaxed muscle. And then below it's gonna be our contracted muscle. Let me just erase this and put this in the middle. And here we'll do contracted. So when I draw this, I'm gonna have to do something specific. And what I have to do is I have to make sure my myosins are basically the same length. Why am I gonna do this? We wanna recall when we contract the Z disc and the thin filament is gonna move towards the M line, right like that. So this is going to move towards the center. So remember the myosin is not moving, it's stationary. It's moving because the heads are all pulling. But those, but the whole protein itself is staying in its position. So what you should see is what that means is if I drew this really well, remember this was my A band. Your A band doesn't change. What's going to change is your I band and your H zone. Okay. So your H zone was this area here. Whoa. Wrong letter completely. That's our H zone. All right. So now we're going to come in here and we're going to redraw our I band and our Z disc. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my Z disc. My Z disc has to get closer to my myosin. Oh, I've never done this in terms of drawing it in this way before. So I'm gonna have to draw kind of like in a different way by doing my thin filaments here. Like that, so that'll become my A band. You see I have a nice overlap and you see how my H zone, that, that area that goes from one actin to another actin disappeared completely. Oh, maybe this will be easier, maybe not. Sort of easier, sort of not. Ah, hopefully you get the hopefully you get the picture here, okay? You'll look at another picture too to help you. Because this I'm just drawing like really fast. It's meant to show you how here you're gonna have like your eye band. So remember that was our eye band area. You notice how now our eye band area is going to get smaller or disappear entirely. It sort of depends on where the other myosins are, but it's going to disappear. So the A band stays the same, the I band gets smaller and the H zone is going to get smaller as the Z discs moves closer together. So for some, sometimes I tell students to think about this as if you put your fingers together and you're gonna create your sarcomere like this. And when your sarcomere goes together, you notice how the spaces between your fingers go away. That's your I band. And you should see that your I band gets smaller. Your A band in this case will seem to get bigger, but for the muscle, it doesn't get bigger. Okay. So that's our contraction of everything. This probably was a lot longer video than I really wanted it to be this last part. So I hope that all of this helped you figure it out organization of your skeletal muscle as an organ and then the microscopic structures and then was a nice refresher for synaptic transmission and shows you how the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum initiates everything and how contraction of the sarcomere works. For muscles at rest, you have to remember, you have to get rid of 
acetylcholine. Acetylcholine has to be broken down. And if you don't, you continuously contract your muscle. So just kind of think about like your muscles constantly taut and tight is because acetylcholine is still there. Okay. So you'll constantly contract it. You have to relax between each muscle contraction. So you'll have to let your sarcomere bounce back to its original size. So essentially when, re when contraction is done and calcium gets reabsorbed, what happens is the myosin binding sites close again, and then the muscle is going to spring back. Like I was talking about an accordion, right? The accordion comes in and gets small, and then the accordion comes out and gets long. It extends a little bit beyond its length, and then it is going to recoil back to its original position, okay? So I hope that helped everybody with some of the muscle contraction stuff. Post some of your questions or come to office hours if you need more help.